Okay, so we're going to talk today a little bit about the BCS summer report, and I think one of the main findings is, um, in simple terms, that the data centre industry has very much embraced um, sustainability. It's always been important, but the, the sort of sustainability and net zero goals, the industry is very much, um, that's where it's heading. Is that right? It is, and uh, firstly, thanks for having me on, Phil. Um, yeah, it's, it's been a very positive response from that respect. Uh, I think something like 80% of our respondents have committed uh, to using at least 90% of re renewables by 2030. Um, and we've we've got anecdotal evidence that some of the big players are, are moving towards that. Uh, and actually, it's they, they are very heavily committing to that. We've also seen um, a move away from things like using diesel fuel oil, and that can be argued whether that's because of the ge current geopolitical crisis, but nevertheless, it's, 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 a, it's a positive step. However, uh, there needs to be some caution around this, um, and it's all very well having that commitment, but the issue is obviously the availability of that renewable energy um, and it being available at commercially viable prices. Uh, we also have the challenge at the moment where, again, because of the current geopolitical issues, we have the lessening of, of green targets. Uh, so what we're seeing is, is kind of, if we're not very careful, the, the, the dialogue around going back to using more fossil fuels, because simply the infrastructure is there, it's, it's available. Um, so that's something that we need to watch out for. OK, and I know the survey also suggested that while well, the industry is doing a I think a fairly decent job of heading towards the you know sustainability net zero. Um, there is perhaps some concern or at least interest as to whether they will be, you know, continue to be allowed to, if you like, self-regulate their way towards that, or if government will intervene. And bearing in mind what you just said, that there may be some lessening of government sort of green targets for, for you know, political reasons. How do you unpick that sort of situation if it's possible to? Yes, it's it's, it's one that we're watching very closely, actually. Um, because again, I mean, the data center industry is one of the few industries that set out of any side of uh, government legislative bodies in terms of targets. Um, but having said that, we are seeing those legislative lead levers being enacted. And we're seeing that through planning and permit permitting. So for example, if you see what's happening in Dublin at the moment um, with the, the power and permitting there, we've seen Microsoft, we've seen Amazon, we've seen digital, uh, and Equinix all delay projects because of the confusion or the lack of clarity uh, around uh, what's happening there. Uh, we've, you know, the, the moratorium in Amsterdam is, is, is well known. Uh, and again, if you see the pressures that London and, and Frankfurt are, are now coming up to, um, again, it's, it's going to be interesting to see the reaction there. Um, the reaction of the so-called tier two cities like Milan, Madrid, uh, Nordics that see this actually as an opportunity uh, and how they will address that, that will that'll be a very interesting move. Okay, and do you, I mean, do you personally or, or you know, BCS as a company, do you have a view on self-regulation versus sort of government or, you know, some kind of state intervention, whether it's at a local level or national, do, do, do you see it as a good or bad thing? Or do you think the industry can be sort of trusted and left alone and indeed might even do a better job if it's you know, not meddled with by those that maybe don't quite understand what's going on? And, and that's the risk. Uh, I think our view would be that the, the way forward is that the industry bodies work very closely with governments and we're allowed to continue the, the, the self-regulation. And, and, and what that will happen is then there'll be an evolution um, and we'll work together to get to, to where we need to get to. I think if legislative framework is, is, is enacted, then it's always reactive, uh, and that will have a corresponding effect on, on, on the industry itself. And I think also where, where legislation does come in, um, there the grows a cottage industry around finding loopholes. I mean, just look at tax systems, for example. Um, but there does need to be a commitment to turn um the commitment that we have into action um because at the moment a, a lot of it is done around offsetting um but we need to to, to move away from that and and put more fundamental issues uh, to bed okay and, and perhaps a, sl a slightly naughty question but do you think if um whether it's the uk government which has hinted at perhaps you know rowing back slightly on on green targets and, and taxes do you think if that did happen do you think 
the industry is kind of waiting to go, oh, phew, we can kind of, if not go back to bad old days, at least we don't need, or do you think there is a, a sort of long lasting commitment that regardless of what, you know, the signals are from government, the industry as a whole is, is committed um, to, to environmental improvements for, for you know, a number of reasons? I, I, I think it's committed to environmental improvements. Um, and that comes basically from, uh, you look what's happening globally, um, and that will drive that, and public opinion will absolutely drive that as well. Um, and the fact is that we just have to become more efficient in the way we use our energy. Um, and the byproducts of that, how do we reinvest that back into the community? I think that will be ongoing. I think that won't change. Okay, and in terms of other findings of the report, um, you found that overall the, the industry is in rude health in the sense that there doesn't seem to be much, if any, slowing in, perhaps even an acceleration, that more and more data centres are being built um, across the globe. Is that right? Yeah, and uh, you, you look at the economic headwinds um, that are, are, are globally occurring at the moment, uh, and the, the news is incredibly positive. Um, we have record levels of positivity in the, in the report. Uh, and as an example, now five percent of developers uh, are are absolutely predicting that they they'll increase their portfolios in the in the next year. Um, and th there's a slightly mixed signal in terms of what's driving this. I mean, in 2021, 13 percent of of developers would um, go on spec development. This year, it's 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 naught. However, the the, the overall levels of prelet space that drive developments has has reduced. Um, and this is backed up by, by other industry-wide reports. And over the next five years, the predictors are that the industry will grow somewhere between five to, to 13% CAGR over the next five years. Uh, cloud is predicted to grow by over 60% in the next five years. So I think those underlying factors absolutely indicate that we are in rude health. Okay, and you, you've sort of mentioned earlier on when we're talking a bit about sustainability of the sort of energy side of things clearly we can't ignore what's going on with costs of energy again whatever different governments do or don't give help to you know, private individual businesses um a lot of the industry is quite clever obviously and they pre-buy power um, you know months or years in advance so i'm guessing at the moment maybe a lot of data centers are, are slightly cushioned from from the, the mass pricing but presumed at some stage these sort of you know three four five times current energy bills are going to kick into the industry and, and what sort of did, did the survey uncover what impact that may or may not have and have on the industry and, and you know, up customer uptake so uh, i mean to that point um the, this this mixed reports so um <clears throat> at the moment the indications are that the colo sector is, is suffering more than probably the wholesale sector market and, and definitely the smaller operators are bearing the brunt of the pressure as they just don't have the volume um, that the bigger players do. Um, while some of the costs will be absorbed, ultimately the cost of data storage will increase and, and that will be passed on to the customers. Um, and I think we're going to get more clarity in the, in the coming months as, as those hedge periods run out and the new fit, future fixed costs are, are fixed. But again, what I think it will drive is more creativity about the way we use the energy uh, and where that energy comes from. And um, without sort of labouring the point, do, do you think, I mean, again, I can only speak from sort of UK where, you know, where we are and see what happens, but, but you know, there seems to be a, a potential, you know, loads of people going out of business because of energy costs, you know, maybe the government will intervene in time or whatever, but do, do you foresee maybe data centre uptake being slowed down as people just say, I can't afford that anymore? or because of digitalization, as you say, they'll become more creative, pass on some of the costs, and, and most companies will be able to, to continue their data center usage, if you like. I think um, it'll, it'll have regional impacts. Um, and I mean, one of the things that we've been discussing for the last few years is, is exactly that, is around the, the, the cost of energy uh, and where you should probably get a bit more intelligent in terms of how you run your portfolios. So the more energy intensive type processing goes to areas such as the Nordics that have, you know, relatively available renewables are not so affected by the, the volatility in the, in the, the marketplace at the moment. Uh, and those absolutely essential processes are, are kept locally. Um, I think the UK, I don't think that the indicators absolutely are that the UK is suffering more in the energy crisis than, than elsewhere, certainly across Europe. Um, and 
that again I think will be pause for thought in terms of how you manage those portfolios. So again, I think it will drive change in the way that the estates are managed. Okay, yeah, that's interesting because there seems to be, you know, sort of anecdotally, if you like, what I see is there are certainly in the Nordics, there seems to be quite a lot of activity, colos that have maybe existed just there for a while are beginning to become more sort of European wide or even global in their outlook. So you think those kind of regions um, are set to benefit from the, the, the current situation? I think where there's this readily renewable uh, energy that is not uh, tied to the volatility of the, the energy market, then absolutely it becomes very, very attractive. Okay. Um, and another, I think, area which we probably talk about when, whenever we get together um, is the skill shortage in the industry. And um, I'm guessing that probably hasn't improved. I don't know if it's getting worse, but, but where are we with with a, perhaps a slightly aging data center professional population and, and the folks that need to be coming along to replace them? Absolutely. Um, we, we're absolutely in a space where, again, um, and for as long as I can remember, I think from whenever we've done this report, skill shortages is, is, have absolutely been to the fore. Um, and, and concerns have been increasing in the last few years, uh, and that's been accelerating. Um, I think this summer survey noted overall um, that on the design and builds uh, side, you know, there's a marked increase. So I think 95% of respondents this year uh, stated that they were very concerned around that skill shortage, where I think it was around about 86 in the, in the last report. Um, I think notably that the developer and investor markets um, expressed the strongest concerning views. Um, and all, this re all the respondents from this group absolutely had that concern. Um, and they felt that the demand for labour would rise, but the availability of skills would, would, would fall. And um, without wanting to sort of panic folks, but do you think unless more is done to address that issue at some point, you know, we're talking about a booming data center industry, but at some point will there be a, you know, a slowdown just because, you know, the number of data centers that people are wanting to build could just cannot be resourced with the, enough of the right people in the right place. Is, is that a, a, a real concern or are you optimistic that before that becomes an issue, there will be a, a whole new sort of generation of, of data center folks coming online? Well, in the, in the, in the past, we've managed that through innovative ways of, of construction and design. Um, and I think from that point of view, again, we'll see the likes of AI come into the fore, um, but nevertheless, that will mask to a certain extent the issue we have. At the end of the day, we're still a people business um, and we're very dependent on those skills. I think that these skills will become more attractive uh, and that will have an upward pressure on, on pricing points. Yeah, I was going to say, because I think the report indicates that more generally there's sort of rising costs. So clearly the energy thing is a, is a major spike, but you've got the skills and I'm guessing just whether it's labour materials, inflation in, in a lot of places, is, is that a concern or is that at a manageable level that, as you mentioned earlier, companies can either absorb it or they don't have to pass too much on to customers so there's not a major sort of disruption just yet? I think the, the, the issue around that is the volatility. Um, the, the, the comments that we're getting back, there was, there was a consensus that sourcing challenges have eased, but it's relative. Um, there's still underlying issues that need to be well managed and, and those risks mitigated. Um, there's a rising, uh, there's the concern around the rising cost of transportation, for example. So it's all through the, the supply chain. It's not just, you know, raw materials. It's all the way through. Um, and it, the concern is, is, is really around how we have predictability in terms of our term on schedule and, and cost. Because, you know, as, as demand rises, the supply we see is under pressure. Um, that has impact not only on cost, but delivery times and things of that nature. Um, so I think there's, there's going to be a period and we have been going through a period whereby we need to adjust to this, manage this, and again, be innovative in the way we, we, we address these issues. And, and is this the, the, the sort of supply chain disruption, is that still sort of a hangover from the pandemic that, that you know, disrupted things massively and we're still catching up with that? Or are there other things sort of more long term going on that, that means this will become a, you know, a normal scenario as opposed to something that, you know, in a year's time, we might all be wondering you know, why we were so worried about it? 
So there's, uh, I mean, there's obviously impact of the pandemic, and, and that still has ongoing um, reverberations. Underlying that, obviously, is that the energy crisis is also having an impact at the moment. Uh, and that's creating volatility because that impacts uh, on every aspect, whether that's from kind of the manufacturing process down through to the, the cost of living. So again, that, that produces an upward pressure. Um, and I think for the next kind of year, two years, uh, we're going to have to face this volatility. I think eventually, as all these things do, it, it will stabilize. Um, and I think it will also be a driver for change. And in terms of that change, I mean, I'm guessing, particularly if you sort of combine supply chains and sustainability, maybe the logical um, sort of solution is to, to shorten those supply chains. And I know a lot of um, countries, maybe the UK being a classic example, have sort of offshored vast amounts of their manufacturing uh, and perhaps are now thinking it's time to bring it a bit you know, more locally. But is, is, is that one sort of significant long-term change you, you would see that people would just decide that in order to be you know confident of their supply chain they need to be more in control and therefore have it closer to them and understand you know who's doing what i think there certainly is a drive to bring resilience into the supply chain um, i mean obviously what we've driven through globalizations is 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 areas of excellence now if you take europe for example italy is well known for for their handlers and uh, handling units and, and chillers um, but if you look at, you know, the, the, the supply, the supply chains that are based in China, um, I think there's, there's an unpicking of that. So certainly the fact is that you'll have better access or at least resiliency within your supply chain. You'll have a go to should any issues occur. Um, and what we see is, is clients absolutely looking at that. Unfortunately, the manufacturing base just does not exist in, 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 in localization. So for, in order that to happen. Uh, there's going to need to be massive investment but as i say i think clients are looking at the fact that how can they build resilience into that supply chain so if there is a shock they can react to that okay um and mention of clients it'd be good to understand i uh, understand you know confidentially wise you often can't give us sort of names and numbers but um can you give us some flavor of the issues or ways in which you're helping companies um address some of maybe some of the issues we've discussed in it yeah so i mean when we, we'd offer, offer a, a whole life service. So uh, right from finding power for our clients through our utilities business, um, and we are flat out in that, in that business at this moment in time, um, trying to map where those, those power capacity is uh, and where we can get those power supplies in. Um, then we're looking at kind of the, the business cases around that, because obviously with the volatility that was experienced in the market at the moment, we probably have a, a two to three year development cycle. So trying to predict where we're going to be in three years time, where we've gone over that hump um, and will we be in a, a, a better place is, is, is challenging. And then there's the, the delivery issues of the projects themselves right through from the design, design stage through to, to deployment itself. And again, coming back to your point is, you know, how do we manage those supply chains? How do we manage those long lead items, those delivery items? Um, and, and all clients are, are, are facing these issues. I think what we have seen is that we are working far more closely with clients in collaboration because we realize that the fact that we are in this together, uh, we need those positive outcomes and we need to deliver those uh, better value uh, business results. So I think there's more openness in clients from clients, what their pinch points are, what their issues are, what their challenges are, and they're asking us to, to help them solve that. Okay, and, and it sounds as if they, they're, they're, you know, they're taking this seriously but i'm wondering are, do you think there's still a, a sector of a section of the market that's just sort of battening down the hatches crossing their fingers and thinking you know give it six 12 months hopefully the war in ukraine might go away and we'll all kind of go back to life at normal. or do you think this is a bit of a point in time where because of all these various situations scenarios people are making a, a really different sort of approach to, to the future and that will be a lasting change or so in 12 months time when we all just wonder what the fuss was about and life goes on as, as it always has done. You can never predict the future, but you can look at history uh, and learn from it. I think what we've learned from here is that there was a complacency that built into the industry, um, certainly in terms of, of how we conducted our business. I think this is a absolute catalyst for change. And I think anybody that, that buttons down the hatches and hopes for the best will be left behind. 
Um, I think it would be a driver for looking at new energy sources, uh, things like self-generation. We've talked about alternative fuels uh, in terms of, of using hydro-treated vegetable oil rather than diesel. Um, and I think it will also drive the way we look at resilience in data centres. So less dependency on standby generators. I think there'll be more investment in terms of other storage solutions such as hydrogen batteries. Um, and this is going to take investment. But having said that, I think to the medium and long term, that will make us a lot more attractive industry. I think it'll make us a lot more attractive to customers. And actually, I think customers will start demanding that those things are put in place. So I think any business that wants to be at the forefront, having got over this, they need to change. Okay, and uh, um, just a, a, a bit of a, again, it's a, a sort of bit of a guessing game, but do you think the industry, the, the sort of names we all know will, are the ones that we'll see, or, or are we again at a moment where maybe there are going to be some smart, new, agile data center companies that come along with a completely different model and way of doing it? And also, I know at the moment, for example, Africa is a bit of an untapped source, so, you know, that might, you know, things might happen there. I mean, I say, did, did you anticipate that kind of volatility in the market, or do you think it's fairly steady in terms of who's doing what and it'll be more of the same or, or there will be some disruptors come along. I think um, Edge will probably provide um, the biggest opportunity for seeing those disruptors. Um, but we have seen a couple of new entrants that we've talked to um, that have a new approach in that they are absolutely renewable energy driven um, and they look to wherever location they go to uh, to self-generate. So I think that's that's going to be an interesting uh, view on, on how that's going to impact on the industry. Um, but there's no doubt about it, in the current situation, volume matters. Um, to be able to, to have that volume, to manage your business, to look at your energy buying is, is absolutely critical at the moment. I think it'd be very difficult for a small player to come in. Um, but having said that, coming back to my comment on, on different regions are impacted in different ways, I think you may well see uh, some regional disruption. Okay, we, we covered a lot of ground and um, um, final question, which I like to sometimes ask folks is, um, when it comes to the industry, are you a glass half full or half empty person? I mean, do you think the industry has the will and the, the technology to move and address some of the issues we've discussed and it's good, or do you slightly worry that it, something will come out of sync and there'll be a bit of a you know disjoint because whether it's you know skill shortage energy prices some kind of combination of circumstances i'm i'm a i'm a glass half full person um you know i'm of the the generation that has, has gone through the industry and the opportunities it's given me and actually i look at some of the people that are coming through my business um and the way they are reacting to the challenges uh, and their outlook um, is, is just totally different. Um, uh, the willingness to embrace change, um, I think, is, is absolutely fantastic. Uh, and their agility and thought is, is brilliant. So I, I, I genuinely think that the, the industry has the ability to change, and I think it will change. We're, we're seeing the seeds of that now. Uh, I think innovation, certainly in the, probably the last five years, has been far more accelerated pace than probably the previous 20 years. I think the current situation, again, is only going to add fuel to that. Excuse the pun. Um, but no, I'm, I'm absolutely confident um, that this will be a real wake up call for us and we'll respond to it and we'll come out in a far better place in, in two, three years time. OK, and, and just one more sort of finally, finally, in terms of the, the industry, so shall we say wider responsibility? I mean, at the moment, for example, we're, I think, about to be encouraged to consume less energy, you know, to, to help the situation. Do you think the data center industry, bearing in mind, obviously, it makes its money out of ultimately storing and moving data around? Do you think it needs to engage in the wider debate? You know, at some stage, do we need to start suggesting to folks that, you know, taking endless photos, storing endless, you know, videos, et cetera, possibly isn't the greatest use of, you know, energy, digital infrastructure. Uh, is that any responsibility of the data center industry or are they, 
all right just to sit there and if someone comes along and says i need this they'll just go yep that's absolutely fine i think it's it, it's it's everybody's responsibility and it's interesting i was having this discussion last week in the fact that you know we've got to remember how new the technology that we're using is um and there's this this kind of graph that is drawn is the fact that on the moment we're up the curve because everything's new um, we're integrating into our lives and we don't still fully understand the implications but i think as we go through a generational change it'll just become a part of life absolutely the impacts on on the environment uh, and our fellow man will absolutely be understood and i think people will use it far more responsibility uh, responsibly I think we do have a, a duty to, to echo that message uh, and bring that through. Um, but ultimately, it's the responsibility of, of everybody, everybody that's involved in the industry. Um, but again, I think you, you take the data center industry, you look at the technology advancements in, in servers, the energy uses in, in, that are predicted in those, that's going to reduce markedly. So I think the data industry has, has taken this on um, uh, and we are doing as much as we can do at this moment in time. That's brilliant. It's, it's always great to catch up with you, Jim, and thanks for sharing some, some fascinating insights. So thanks very much indeed for your time. Thank you. Thank you for your time. Thank you for the platform.